Welcome to Con Langry, the podcast about constructed languages and the people who create them. I'm George Corley, and with me over in California, we have Jesse Peterson. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, doing good, Jesse. And uh, I brought you on particularly, you know, people know you from Langtime Studio and uh, and and your work there with with David there. But there's something that you have been working on. Uh, really, a couple things. I think that it seems to be you have been making some things that are going to help bring people into Conlanging. And I hope so. Yeah. Um, so like the two things that I'm thinking of are the um, Conlang Venture mm -hmm. that was sort of a, a test of like how you can combine different features in different ways and come up with different languages. And now starting, it started at the beginning of 2024, mm -hmm. um, is the Conlang Year, which by the time this comes out, it'll be pretty far along but i'm sure people can jump in and like start it whenever they want to right oh for sure yeah right now yeah. there are dates you know assigned to each day simply because if you do start on january 1st then you know um you know like day 52 doesn't mean as much as say march 3rd which i don't mm -hmm. think that really tracks out in terms of counting the days but um it it you know just allows you to kind of figure out where you are in the calendar year However, the goal is, you know, by the end of it to have essentially 366 prompts because it's leap year. So there will be 366 um, and you could start it next year. You could start it, you know, on March 8th. You could start it whenever and just go, you know, day one, day two. I also know there are people who do, you know, like six prompts at once. And so if that's you, then you could join in anytime and do a whole bunch of prompts all at once and then, you know catch up or do one a week <laughs> whatever works for for people doing it yeah and that's 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 really interesting uh to see the the way that you've you've built it up um i want to highlight so like just looking at the site uh let me let me just actually have it up here for video viewers so i can uh, I can uh, refer to that mm -hmm. is you've got, we are at week three and mm -hmm. it's not until week three that we're making IPA charts. Right. So like at the beginning, you are doing a lot of the tasks are world building tasks, mm -hmm. deciding what your con line is for and also what, um, who your speakers are and, and, and flora and fauna and stuff. Yes. What was your reasoning in deciding to do that and deciding to do so much of it at the, at the start? Sure. Uh, so first of all, I've noticed that with a lot of conlangers, um, especially conlangers who are trying to get into the craft. And so um, really a lot of this work is aimed at either revitalizing you know, conling projects for people who have been in it, but kind of want a jump start to get back into it, or at beginning conlingers who have kind of seen it and thought about getting into conlinging, but haven't given it a shot yet. And one of the the problems I see with a lot of projects is people forget partway through why they were doing it in the first place. And that can lead to a waning of motivation just in general, just not really being super invested in, um, in the project halfway through because you kind of forget what you were doing in the first place. But I've also seen it lead to a sort of mashing together of features and things that are in the language because you know the person creating it has lost sight of why they wanted to create it in the first place and so taking two days two entire days to say really why are you doing this who is it for how do you want to share it i think can really help stabilize a project especially when you keep that motivation nearby when you you know put it on a sticky note and put it right on your your workspace to remind yourself why you're doing this in the first place. Um, I think that really helps in later stages and helps kind of ground the entire project. 
I think it also helps when you share it with other people to tell them why you created it, because that's really the only way another conlinger can evaluate the work is to say, well, what was your goal in the first place? And are you reaching that goal? Because, you know, conlings can be at very many different quality levels, but the only way to truly evaluate the work and give feedback is to say, what was your goal and are you reaching it? And so that was the purpose for that. The world building days are built in because as we get this week, so in week three, it's the, you know, the first protoforms will actually be created this week. And um, one thing I've noticed is there are, especially among beginning conlangers, times when it comes to creating basic vocabulary and they don't know what they should have words for. Uh, specifically the the basic roots where it's, you know, should this be a basic root or should it be a compound or whatever? And so having those days of really think about world building, really think about what your speakers are seeing around them on a daily basis. What are they interacting with? How are they interacting with it? What do their bodies look like? These are all questions where the better ideas you have for them, the more you know, solid and built out those features are. When it comes to creating basic vocabulary, you've already got a list that you need. You know, if they're surrounded by tall grasses and lots and lots of shrubs, then those shrubs need a word. Those, that grass needs a word. Um, if their bodies have five legs but no arms, you need a word for leg, but you shouldn't create a word for arm. And so it's, you know, it's those kinds of decisions going in where it's once you've got that world building fleshed out, as you start creating protoforms, you've got lists already at your disposal for what you need words for. That, yeah, that sounds that that sounds really reasonable, and I think this is sort of on a smaller scale what you see. Like um, I was talking to Artifaxian last mm-hmm. month, and like he like sort of paused conlanging for possibly quite a long time to do mm-hmm. a whole big geofiction thing to sure. work out what his planet is like. Yeah. And this is that on a smaller scale because you really are still focusing on the conlanging. Yeah. But you want some world building up front in order to ground it and be sure how things are going to work out. Right. That's, right. That's, yeah, that's really an excellent thing. And I really want to move back on this idea uh, of day one is set an intention for your language. Mm-hmm. So that's like getting at what the purpose is, why why you are making it. Right. And then day two, you have set an intention for sharing your language, Yeah, which is not really like there's always been sort of a default assumption that like people will trickle out little bits of, of what they're doing over time in the communities. And it's more recently that you and David have done streaming. I've been doing streaming and people have Mm -hmm. been doing all these like YouTube features and such. So it's interesting to see you building that in, at the start of like what how are you going to show this to other people whether right. it's like a youtube showcase or a or or a, a grammar that you just post online mm-hmm. somewhere or maybe even you don't share it right right and i think it's also important to remember who you want to share it with because um you know part of that is even if you do post it on youtube you may still have a very specific audience in mind And that's going to drive how you talk about your language. And so every step of the way, what you need to, how you need to describe your features is really going to be built around who do you want to be reading or watching your work. And so, you know, if you're aiming it at your friends who have no background in linguistics, but they share a D&D campaign with you and you want this language to be accessible to them you're going to need to describe the language in a very different way than if you are posting it for fellow conlingers with, you know, pretty advanced linguistics knowledge. Uh, you're, you're going to be talking about the features in very different ways. And so it really boils down to if you don't know who you're, you're really creating this for, then you don't even know how to talk about it or how to write about it in a consistent manner. 
And so keeping that in mind, I think is incredibly important. And then also, yeah, if you're going to be doing a video, you're probably going to be doing your descriptions in very different ways than if you were going to write it and share it in a composed PDF or in daily blog posts or whatever you want to do. And so there's no right or wrong way about it, but there is a better way to do it for it to actually make sense to the people you want to have it shared with. Yeah. So another part of the, the Conlang year project is that you are doing it along with everybody else. Yes, I am. And uh, you have keeping with the, the thing, the, one of the first things you did was create um, the speakers who are uh, Nise, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, Nisa, Nise. It kind of depends on which language you're going by with how it's pronounced okay. and whether it's been anglicized. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what but they are they are a type of like Nordic gnome. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um I actually was introduced to the term Nissa, um, and that's how it's pronounced in the the show I'm about to refer to. Um I was introduced to them through a cartoon called Hilda. And it's an adorable cartoon. It's really aimed more at kids, but uh, let me tell you, as an adult, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, and it's this girl who goes on just all sorts of adventures and meets all sorts of mythological creatures, but most of them are really based around more Nordic mythology. And so like that is really intriguing to my mind. And in the show, there is, um, a, well, a community really of Nyssa characters. Mm-hmm. And one of them in particular, um, actually lives with Hilda in her house. And so, um, that's really where this got inspired. And then once, um, it was actually David who sent me an article on the history of Nyssa in Nordic folklore that got me very interested in it because it really does cross over with gnomes. And if you know me, you know that I like garden gnomes. I have no idea why. There's absolutely <laughs> no reason that they intrigue me and delight me and just make me happy, but they do. And so um, the crossover where you look at some of the traditional depictions of Nyssa really crosses over with a lot of the depictions that we have of gnomes. And yeah, they're, they can be devious little, little creatures, but um, they can also be quite fun. And um, in, in the actual Nordic folklore, they have a lot of different uh, ways that they are, are treated and described um, but I kind of, you know, just picked, picked how I wanted to treat them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. So like, and you are going day by day with mm-hmm. the same pace as the Conlang year and you're, you're building it up. So I am, around- I have not, I was going to say, I have not posted the most recent information because I do have all my sounds compiled and I've shared it on uh, the Lang Time Discord. I haven't put it online yet just because that takes you know an extra step and sometimes i'm a little behind on updating the website but um but yes i am doing it day by day you know jotting down notes in my notebook and then solidifying it when it gets to the the days of actually writing it out yeah it'll i'm sure it'll likely be up by the time this comes yes. out but yeah yes because it'll <laughs> yeah. probably be up by the <laughs> end of the be. week so yeah yeah there will be there will be up but i mean it's it's interesting to to see you're following this of course in order to give people sort of an example um Mm -hmm. uh, a a question i have is like what was the goal of like parceling all of this stuff out day by day like one task each day part of that was what i have seen in um, the conling communities that i'm involved with are conlingers who struggle with keeping motivation not because they aren't excited about the project but because there gets to be a point in the language creation process where you just say what am i supposed to do next or you get to one of those cycles where you just spent you know eight hours every day for three days straight doing nothing but conlanging and then you hit day four and you're like i'm just i'm 
wiped out. I have no energy left for it. I don't really know what I want to do with it. And then it kind of, you know, peters out from there. And so one of my goals was to provide these sort of littler prompts. They can take a lot of time depending on what the actual prompt is and depending on the personality type of the person doing the prompt with how much work they want to put into each one. Um, but my goal was to make it smaller so that you could do sort of bite-sized chunks every single day to stay involved in the language, stay involved in your world, and make these smaller decisions that build up to a much larger you know, language description. And then um, on top of that, having the prompts, someone else telling you what to do can go a long way when you are struggling with motivation, um, where you have a very specific question to, to answer. And some days are much easier because some days like, you know, there's one day like, do you want diphthongs in your language? And uh, it was really funny to see some responses on social media where people were just like, nope, and they were done. Uh, and so, you know, days like that, it is really nice to be able to have that sort of back and forth flow where some days are, are heavier, some days are lighter, um, but every day there's something to think about. And so it it's really just meant to be a way of you know, try this out and try to stay motivated on a daily basis without overwhelming yourself with making too many decisions at once and, you know, have someone else tell you what to do. And like I said, that can go a long way when you're struggling with trying to figure out what to do in a language. Yeah, because like it's it, it is definitely bite sized because you have a day mm -hmm. of choose monophthongs, choose mm -hmm. diphthongs. I think in the consonants you have choose what series you want first yeah. and then yeah. and then refining from there it's also kind of a step by step of like things that you and i as more experienced conlingers we mm -hmm. we could probably do the whole phonology in one day easily right, right. but parceling it out over a period mm -hmm. of time makes people think about it more and also gives them like even just like a five minute task to do each day yeah. rather than yeah. spending yeah. an hour on it. And it's also, I, as the year builds, because obviously here it's, you know, it's all very beginning and you're, you're doing a, a starting sound inventory, which means, you know, you're only working with one system at this point. And later on in the year, it obviously gets much more complex with how many, systems you're trying to keep in track with, you know, how was I really working with nouns? What was I doing with them? What were my starting sounds versus my modern sounds and so on? And so throughout the year, I also just have entire days where it's like, listen, review your notes. Do they still say what you think they say? Do you, you know, are you still on track? Do you need to organize those notes because you kind of wrote them down in three different places and never really put them together, which means you've actually been using different inflections and didn't realize it. Um, these are all things that conlingers know, you know, any conlinger who has done uh, complete projects, they, they know that this happens. And it's like, you can start a project with the best of intentions. And I think David and I are, are very good examples of this where partway through we go wait we did what um and it's just you just forget because you know you you get in the process and three months later you don't really remember what you said three months ago and so yeah there are entire days built in where it's like just just review your stuff make sure it's still on target oh <laughs> uh, yeah it's definitely i mean uh <laughs> I've, I've been writing some example sentences in my dictionary for mm -hmm. Ndutaga, and mm -hmm. I forgot that I had a definite article and I realized yep. that I'm like, Oh, I got to put, I put, got to put if after the noun. Cause that's definite. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And, and listen, like everyone's been there. Everyone knows it. Um, it can be really funny to watch, you know, when you're watching people do it and you're going, how did you forget this? But you know, if you, if you conling, you know exactly what we are talking about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, and it goes, goes at any level like when i was just starting out conling i remember like i was working on my language at lunch one day mm -hmm. and uh i was just looking looking through my lexicon it's i mean this is high school this is beginning conling or stuff right. but still i was looking through there and people were like what are you studying i'm like i'm, I'm making a language 
And and they're like, but why are you studying it? You're just making it up. It's not, no, I have to. I had to look at the words that I already have mm-hmm. so I can build new words. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And there's always there's 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 always a need to go back to your references. So that's really yeah. cool that you you built in these days to just review your notes. It's definitely mm-hmm. something I need to do. <laughs> Compile some <laughs> things into uh Yes. And you know, it's something everyone needs needs to do really. Um because well, like I said, anyone who's been in the middle of a project knows that feeling. Um and if you've ever mm-hmm. done you know, more than one language, there will be times where you suddenly start using a feature and then later realize you were kind of doing a crossover of another language you created and that wasn't supposed to be in this language. Um, And, you know, we've all been there. And so just having that time where it's like, no, like today is really all about organizing. Um, And so that's, I think it's, it's really important, but it's a step we overlook because that's, especially as creative types and i think most conlangers have a streak of creativity in them otherwise i don't think they'd be drawn to the art um there there are definitely um days where we don't want to do those because that's just the the housekeeping stuff we want to do the big things we want to do the the more fun things and have sentences to show for it have new words to show for it but the the organizational things are are really really important to keeping the whole project together. So let's, let's talk about like sort of themes that are going to happen through the year. Cause mm-hmm. like for the first month it was initial world building. And then um, at the time of recording, you have mm-hmm. gotten through fauna tactics. You're basically solidified with initial phonology. Right. What are the next like broad steps that you're doing that you're breaking up into smaller chunks as you go? So um, because from here, like this is all, you know, proto stages. Right. And so from here, there will be several days of just building out some proto vocabulary. Um, and the goal is to get a variety of words, a variety of word types, nouns, verbs and so on. Um, just to get a handle of, you know, what's going to be some of the words you're going to play with later on down the road. Um, From here, we're going to go through sound changes because the goal is to also lead people through evolving a a conlang, which is something that, you know, many conlangers just sort of take for granted that that knowledge that they have for how to do that. But for beginning conlangers, that can be, you know, not just a big step, but it can be kind of scary to to go through those stages and make sure you're doing everything. And so there will be prompts sort of focused on, hey, try out this kind of sound change, pick one. Uh, and so if you do the prompts as they are, you'll only have maybe five sound changes to work through, but that's enough to start with if you're a beginner, right? Um, mm-hmm. And so then it'll be on, okay, so now let's describe what is the current state of your phonology. And then from there, it's going to build out into... Um, grammar features into, you know, what are your nouns going to do? What are some basic ways they can inflect? Which ones do you want to include? Um, And so as the slow pace, as you can imagine, there's like an entire day where it's just, do you want number and, you know, indicated on your nouns? If so, what numbers? So do you want singular, Mm -hmm. plural, trio, whatever you want? Um, So there's, you know, a day dedicated to each really kind of basic frequently seen inflection. Um, There are also days built in where it's like, you know, just look these things up, study this, find out what's possible. Um, And those are, uh, you know, especially important for people who are are learning linguistics at the same time they're doing the project, Um, just days of research what's out there, see see what languages do. Once nouns are gone through, then it's the verbs and all the things they can do. Um, And it really builds from there. So um, from, you know, how are nouns inflected? What kinds of inflections do you want for verbs? Now let's move on to the larger grammar structure, clause structure. Um, And so it'll be a while, but once you start putting clauses together, uh, that's where it just really sort of blows up because there are so many different directions that can be gone. And... um, through the latter half of the year, it really is building towards more complex structures like, you know, embedded relative clauses or, you know, the, the kind of 
whether you call them noun clauses or complement clauses, whatever you call them, um, you know, how does your language work with those? And so it will build all the way up through that. And then the entire last month is reserved for Luxember. So it'll be a, a Luxember participation where you can choose how you want to do it, whether you just, you know, share a word and a definition, um, whether you just do it for your own notes or share it out in the world. But the goal is to have everyone in a place where if they wanted, they could do a Luxembourg entry each day where they give an example sentence, they give, you know, like they can really showcase their language and how it works. And so, um, yeah, that entire last month is all Luxembourg. And so I am excited and I hope people are, are able to, to participate with that because I think that'll be really cool to see the sort of products that have come out of a year of work. So you're expecting people to be like participating in Lexember at the end. Do you have specific prompts for Lexember in there or are you just saying make your first word today? Right. So make your second word today. I don't have specific prompts um, for actual Lexember. I may give suggestions for people who want it. I do, however, have days built in prior to Lexember for you to do things like, do you want it built around a theme? You know, like, do you want Luxember to be a themed experience for your language? Um, if so, select that theme, select, you know, what words you want to use. So it's like I build in days of prompts where it's like, you'll actually, I want to say it's somewhere between three to five days. I can't remember off the top of my head, but you'll spend, you know, the better part of a week just deciding how you want to set up your language as Luxember experience. And I think it's important that people can sort of select that if they have ideas for themselves, especially for people who do have a good grasp on, you know, their world and their speakers. And, you know, if, if their speakers have a big mining community, then maybe their entire Luxembourg is going to be built around words for mining, the kinds of things that they would have, the kinds of sentences they may say, some fun vocabulary for, for things they would use. Um, you know, versus somebody like my last Luxember was all built around crocheting and knitting because that's not only where I was personally, but it was for a personal conling where it just made sense mm -hmm. for that, that to work. Um, and so there isn't really one theme that could fit all projects. Um, but I probably will in those days give a lot of suggestions for like, if you do want it themed, here's some ideas to think about. Um, and then for people who do need it, you know, every day I could say just provide a word for this. If you're lost, if you're like, I don't know what to do, provide a word for this. Um, and so, you know, I'll definitely give, give pointers, um, but it, it won't be an expectation that people follow those pointers. It's going to hopefully be a, a more individualized experience. Yeah. And do you have like any like specific goals for the end in terms of number of words or ability to translate this particular thing or it's more that what I hope is that if everyone, like if you follow along and do all the prompts leading up, that your language will be in a spot where you could write an original piece in your language, um, like a, a little story or, <clears throat> excuse me, or a sample dialogue, and that you could write that in your language and have all the features that you need to support it. Vocab creation is something that no matter how complete, and those air quotes are, are very important because no conling is truly complete, um, but no matter how complete you feel your, your language is, there is always more vocab you can create. And so that's not an issue. You can always go back and create more vocabulary. The important thing is to have a larger system in place so that you don't have to create more system features, or if you do, they're minimal. So like at the time that you get to the end of the year, you'll have strategies for embedding clauses, doing modifier clauses, doing um, comparatives, superlatives, and so on. So it's like, you'll have all these features that you can work with. And then the goal is to really make it so if you have a passage you want to translate, you can tackle it. You may need to create new words for it, but overall you can tackle it. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's the goal is to get it to a place where it's a, a workable language where you can really whatever your goal is for using it. Hopefully you'll be able to do it. I want to expand out to some of your other efforts here. Mm -hmm. Like um, here you had you for Fiat Lingua, you wrote what you called a conlang venture. Yes. And 
basically you are going through fe- the the features are the features drawn from Graham Bank, is it? Um, these features, no, I, I do have another okay, article no. on Fiat Lingua that specifically, you know, uses Gram Bank, um, because the oh, goal okay. is there to be able to share con links in a, a more consistent manner. So that way we can, you know, more easily look up features of languages and see, yeah. see how they compare. Um, okay. So here, this, yeah. this it's, it's more, it's more like because grand bank has this particular format yeah okay right yeah right. now i but you have do have a set of features that you are going through and mm-hmm. and basically you can choose things and basically you're just illustrating how the same language can end up in different places depending on what feature right. you choose Right. So um, the, the features included are just the, like, really the most common features you're going to see in languages. So for instance, in word order, you've got three options and the three most common word orders um, that you see regularly are, you know, uh, VSO, SVO, and SOV. Yeah. Not in that order, because SOV is the most common. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. but those are the three options that you have, um, because, you know, outside of saying no dominant order, like languages like German, um, which that is often how typologists classify that one outside of that. Cause that makes it a little too messy for this kind of project. It's like, these are the, the three most common. Um, and so it's like a choose your own adventure book again, really aimed at, um, beginners because at, at my core in my heart, I am a teacher if nothing else. And so, mm-hmm. you know, my goal is if you're starting out conlinging, how might you approach it? And I wanted to show examples of how each decision is going to affect the next. Um, also show that like you shouldn't be scared of having features that match another language because you can have you know a whole bunch of features match and yet the system is totally different. And so the outcome is really different. Um, so I wanted to showcase that. I also wanted to provide a tool for you know teachers if they wanted to introduce conlinging in the classroom it's sort of a, a preset exercise that they could walk through with students. And then I give, um, you know, ideas for how you could build it out from there. Um, ideas that you could use this as a starting point to do something else with it. Um, and it's really, I think, important as you have these sort of tools to have built in pre-made examples. So that way, you know, there is it's hard because in conlinging, you know, there are no right and wrong answers, right? But like in a system like this, if you say, how is the plural formed for this other root, there is a right and a wrong answer. And so you can really show students, how do these sound changes affect this inflectional suffix in this system, but not in this other system. And so um, it's a way of saying this data, you can actually compare across the board and have students working through activities to make sure they understand it before moving on with more, you know, more complex concepts. And same for if you're doing it on your own, you don't have to be in a classroom, but you know, it's the same. You can test it out for yourself and say, here's what I think the forms are going to be. You can go to the next stage and see if you are right. Yeah. It, it seems like you are, it seems like there's a theme here of you wanting to teach conlanging and also provide resources for conlingers to share their work and and learn about the the craft which is really yes. interesting uh i i will say um from your grand bank documentation uh-huh. stuff um i that inspired me in my own stuff to with, with my my dice tables are based on grand bank data and what okay. that started out was was I was going to say, okay, I'm going to take Jesse's spreadsheet and I'm just uh-huh. going to like roll dice on every one of these. And then I started looking deeply at the grant bank data. And I'm like, oh no, these are all interdependent. Yes. I'm yes. going to have to like, I'm going to have to combine a bunch of features together and, mm-hmm. and do that. But that was, that has been fun too. But I really, uh, I am really interested in in your work in sort of promoting conlanging and 
getting better ways to to teach conlanging out there and better ways to document conlanging mm -hmm. out there. Do you have other ideas in the future of other things that you're going to do on those fronts? Um, right now I'm tackling the biggest of those. And so, you know, with Conlang Year, uh, it was one of my big projects. Another project that I am working on and have been working on for quite a while is um, I'm actually working on a textbook. And so um, hopefully that will get finished this year. Um, okay. But always, I'm always looking for more ideas, looking for ways to, to expand what's available um, and looking for ways to develop resources that essentially say the same thing as what's already out there, but provide new ways of explaining it. Because no matter how many resources there are that explain, you know, features or a process, it's not going to work for everyone. And so my goal is to really just provide a lot of different ways of looking at conlanging and what it is that we do that hopefully people who are trying to get into it will be able to find something that really sinks in with them. Um, because, and, and that's, again, going back to the, I am a teacher through and through, you never have a classroom of students with the same aptitudes and skills. And so you always have to find different ways of explaining the same concept. And so that's, that's really my goal. And so, no, I mean, I'll never be finished. I'll always be exploring new ideas and looking for ways to do big projects like this. Um, and so I, I don't know what else will be after that, but I'm definitely excited to see uh, what comes in the future. That, that really is interesting. I, I do note that like the conline year is very much geared towards naturalistic conlanging with the historical method mm -hmm. um, from, you know, what you're telling me and what I see here. Yeah. Um, do you think, sometimes about branching off and in directions of other methods of conlanging or other types of conlang like engelangy type things a little bit those are not um not areas that i am super personally interested in um and so probably not yeah. um because for yeah. me i and I have attempted it. Like I have attempted projects that are are more on that side of conlanging, and they don't hold the same kind of interest for me. And so, I probably won't dive into those as much. I will always give nods to them. I will talk about them. I will say these are amazing projects to look at. Um, these are good things to think about. But I think to be able to really create resources that are helpful for other people trying to get into it, you yourself need to be practiced at it. And I am not a practiced injilinger, I guess you could say, um, <laughs> or oxlinger. I am not practiced at it. And I am not, um, I'm not the person you should go to, um, to get that advice. I've only created, you know, a handful of each and, or tried not, not even a, you know, it's really, I, I've tried to, to create different kinds of things in those systems. Um, when it comes to art links, that is, that is where my heart is. And so um, that, that is where I feel like I can actually give a lot of good advice, good resources, good, you know, procedural kind of information. And so, yeah, that's where, that's where I'm going to stay. Yeah. Well, I, Definitely. I, I was just throwing that oh, out sure. as, as yeah, yeah. possibilities in the future. But uh, yeah, it's 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 very interesting. I'm very interested in the Conlang year. I did not jump on to it, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, but I you know, have my own things going on, too. Oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it definitely can be a source of inspiration. And uh by the time you guys get this episode, it'll be into it a little bit, but you can always mm -hmm. start any time, right? Yeah, and for sure. you can decide to catch up with it or do it at your own pace or whatever you want to deal with, right? And I mean, and the goal is to have these prompts out there and available. So, you know, it may be 2027 that you want to make your conling year. And so, you know, they're yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, that's that that works just as well 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, and you said you're writing a textbook. Yeah. Um, it, is this like a teaching linguistics through conlanging textbook? Is this like focused on conlanging textbook? What 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 it is, what is the goal there? It's focused on conlanging. And so the okay. goal is, you know, teaching conlanging and how to get through it. Um, but as with a lot of my materials, I it is targeted toward students who may not have a background in linguistics. Um, and I think I think that's really important to keep bringing resources to people who are not only getting into conlanging for the first time, but are getting into linguistics. And even for people with a background in linguistics, when you conlang, there are always features that you don't know anything about because, you know, there are too many features of languages to know everything about everything, right? And so there's always going to be a point where you are a beginner in some area. And so, um, you know, my my goal is is to just make the the entire art more um, approachable and user friendly for beginners because it can be incredibly overwhelming when there are assumptions made at a lot of levels that you must already know X feature to be able to to do this. And so, while it is a a textbook aimed at how to start conlanging, um, it also really hopefully also introduces, um, you know, some different ways of linguistic analysis to, to get people at least able to, to recognize terminology so that it's not as overwhelming whenever they go look for resources, um, you know, to build out their experience. Right. It's, it's, it's interesting. And I am very much looking forward to what that looks like because like previous guides to conlanging have not been exactly in the textbook form. Right. Like the language construction kit would be maybe the closest, but it's kind of more of like a, a, a list of different options that, you, that right. you can go through, but not really super step-by-step instruction on how to do things. And then right. um, you have art of language invention, which is, is somewhere which your husband wrote which yes, yes. he admittedly he he wanted it to be a thorough guide to conlang but wasn't able to get as enough pages so right, it's really right. great to see this might be like the first conlanging textbook that maybe gets used in conlanging classes in universities and stuff and that is that is the goal. Um, the goal is to make it something that could be used um, in a classroom and so it's not something that has to be. I want it to be approachable enough that someone could hopefully just take it and use it on their own. But the primary audience is a classroom setting. Um, so it also includes, you know, things like what David couldn't include in his art of language invention, things like exercises. Um, Cause it's like, yeah. you don't for a, a more mass market kind of book where it's supposed to appeal to anyone anywhere in or out of a classroom. Um, exercises are not, necessarily something you expect (laughs) to find. Um, And so, you know, this one will include that. Um, And I'm also really trying to include a diverse um, amount of language data in the descriptions and not only language data from Natlings, but also from Conlangs. And so, you know, I'm really trying hard to really weave the, the data together in a way that makes it clear that it doesn't matter if it's a conlang or a natlang, this feature is here. And so it's important to know about. Um, And so I'm really working at that. It can be difficult because, you know, the languages I know best are Indo-European. And so (laughs) it's a lot of research to find language data from other language and make sure that I'm actually presenting it in a way that is true about the language because mm-hmm. anyone who's researched language and tried to explain what's happening in a, a language knows that you can think you understand it, but you don't. And so it's like, I, I want to make sure that what I'm presenting about the language is, is truthful and good information. <laughs> um, and so, and, you know, pulling from a variety. So that way it's not just a, a textbook that says, here's how you can do it. If you want to create a Germanic language. <laughs> <laughs> Which some people want to do, but we totally and I, I, yeah, and I support that because you know I've done it before and I 
I love studying Germanic languages. It's where where I, I spend a lot of my time looking at, at language um, outside of conlanging. And so I totally support that, but also I don't want to pin, you know, put, put everyone in the same hole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's, that's all very interesting. And I, as I said, I look forward to seeing your textbook. I think uh, more resources, more resources are coming from all kinds of places. There's, mm -hmm. you know, people doing YouTube series, people doing, you're, you're doing a textbook. People are, I'm, I'm going to try to make it like an RPG theme thing. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, it's, and I think all of us coming from different angles and making different kinds of treatments on this mm -hmm. will probably help grow the conlanging hobby into something even more. Uh, but sure I'm, I'm so. looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, send me drafts if you want. <laughs> <laughs> when, no. when I feel at a, a good stage with where I am. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you for coming on. And uh, do you have any final advice to all of the conlangers out there, beginning conlangers and advanced conlangers alike? Um, I think. I think really the the best advice any of us can get is is to keep at it and um, have fun with it. Like that's before I even started posting conlang year some some posts leading up to the actual beginning um, prompts. I, I posted my rules of conlanging and really um, what it boils down to is is make sure you focus on your own journey and don't compare what you have to other people's because I think all too often we all get into a stage of oh, they did this brilliant thing. That's it. I'm done. I can never do something that brilliant. And so I'm just going to, you know, not. And that's a really unfortunate thing to see because um, there there are so many different voices in conlinging and we can always use more. And so keep at it, have fun with it, and really, you know, enjoy the whole process. All right. So this is Jesse Peterson. Yes. And the website is quothalinguist.com. Mm -hmm. so if you want to go and follow along with the Conlang year, and you can see her every week on Langtime Studio. Indeed. Uh, and uh, with that, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing what the textbook looks like and seeing more of the prompts from conlang year hopefully people will start sharing the things that they're making you know if you're doing conlang year share them on all of the social media things and you know i i would definitely like to see what people are are working on that's 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 a, a cool thing to highlight and just yeah. everything uh looking forward to seeing more of that stuff coming out and more more interesting educational materials coming from you jesse and uh thank you for coming on oh thank uh, you for and, having me yeah yeah and for everyone out there uh thank you for listening and happy conlanging special thanks to my patrons on patreon if you go over there right now you can get early access to episodes you can get access to scripts for my solo episodes and you can go get access to exclusive polls for Tongues and Runes. Thank you to Mintaka, Connor Stewart Rowe, Kenan Kigunda, Viren Patrick, Kay, Alex Russell Hayes, Jesse, Sylvia Sotomayor, Alexis Hugelman, Paul Roser, Cassandra Woodhouse, Miles Ronkovich, Jake Penny, Artifexian, Nicholas Norblad, Eloy Varyana Mentuleum, Sigourney Hunter, Anthony Dosimo, Jack Keynes, Graka Grunk, Grammar Antifa, Wu Ming Shui. Con Langery's theme music is by Null Device. Con Langery is distributed 
under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike 4.0 International License. I'm going to just just for a second here I'm going to stop my notifications from work. <laughs> yes, that is very important. Yeah, I also stopped mine just in case so I didn't have any noises going off.